it's Katie Shankle back for another Let's Play. We're doing once again uh, the awesome Click Your Own Adventure game to be or not to be, which uh, was done by Ryan North. I had uh, done a couple run throughs of this game a few months ago, and I thought it was really fun, so I thought I would try it again. Um, I will apologize immediately for my voice uh, because I came down with something. I don't, I'm not entirely sure what it is, but it's some kind of cold slash my allergies and my throat's a little sore. So uh, I have a drink with me and hopefully that will help my speaking. But if I sound a little hoarse, it's because of uh, my sore throat. So uh, the last time I played this game, I did extremely well. I actually uh, played as Ophelia, and I played as uh, King Hamlet, who, if you recall, was Hamlet's father, uh, both of whom in the original play did not do very well as far as staying alive, uh, sp particularly King Hamlet, who died actually before the play even started. So I'm really proud of myself that I was able to uh, get them through and give them happy, uh, happily ever afters. So, uh, in fact, Ophelia became a noted scientist, so I'm really pleased about how that went down. So, uh, this time, I, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to try to win or if I'm just going to try to see what some of the other choices are. But, uh, let's see where we go next. So, choose your own character. Choose your character. You've been born. Congratulations. Good work on the things. Now, surprise, babies are boring. Uh, but I promise most of what we're skipping over was really dull. You ate a lot, and slept a lot, and had lots of friends. Da -da -da, da -da -da. So let's begin, my friend. Uh, remind me who you are again. Are you. Ophelia. Hamlet. So Emo Tina is 30s. Also, it's Prince of Denmark. He has plus one resistance magic. Hamlet Senior. He's king of Denmark, fifty years old. He's super good at fighting and leading people into battles and naps. Let's say plus one to each. Look, bottom line, he's an unstoppable machine of death, and you should choose to be him. And should you choose to be him, you may experience kingly glory. Um, I have still not played as Hamlet, and uh, I think I'm gonna play as Hamlet first. Just uh, what comes to me as far as what I would choose or what I think would be a good choice and then I will play because if you no remember the skull means like going through the way that the story actually progressed in the play so I think what I'm going to do first is play as Hamlet the way I would the smart way and then uh, I will then play uh, just going through the story <coughs> to be he choose to play as Hamlet Da, da, da. You are Hamlet. You are 30 years old and you're back living at home. But it's okay because your home is a castle. That's right, ladies. You're a prince. Things have been rough lately. You've been trying to focus on your studies at Wittenberg University where you and your bros Horatio, Rosencrantz, and Guildenstern all hang out. But you were called home because your father died. Then your dead dad's brother, Claudius, married your mom, Gertrude, two weeks later. Yup. It's made you kind of upset. You raised home to comfort her, but she's married to your uncle, and that is weird. You feel weird. Right now, you're in the audience chamber of your father's castle here in sunny Denmark. King Claudius is here addressing his court. Aetes and Polonius are here, too. Lady's kind of a jerk, and Polonius is his father. Polonius is also the daughter of, or the father of Ophelia, whom you're totally for, sweet on, but she's not here. Who knows what adventure she's having as we speak while you're stuck in this drafty castle room listening to other people talk about their feelings. Speaking of speaking, as now Laertes says something about how now Claudius is king and he's intent the coronation is okay for him to go to, back to France. Claudius says, sure. Wait a minute, you love, you'd love to leave too and go back to school, away from this weird incessant thing your mother's gotten herself into. So gross and weird. What now? Um... I'm going to hold my... T you know what? No, I'm going to ask permission to go to school. 
You hold up your hand and open your mouth before you can say anything. Claudius addresses you, directly calling you his son. On the one hand, that's entirely inappropriate since you just married your mom just like two weeks ago. On the other hand, he has brought Creepy Uncle to new heights. Creepy Uncle points! Points for that, maybe? What now? Insult him under your breath. Uh, by saying you're more than kin, I, you're related more than once now, as both father, son, and uncle, nephew, but less than kind, i.e. this relationship you're in is unnatural, unnatural in real life, people think up zingers like this on the spot all the time, so that totally makes sense. Um, I'm going to do the say you're not my real dad and storm out of the room. While you're busy doing that, your friend Horatio bumps into you and tells you... A. He's in town for your dad's funeral, mom's wedding, and they serve leftover appetizers from one at the other. B. Ghosts are real. And C. He's seen one, and so have a bunch of other guys. D. He keeps showing up at the same time. And E. He's pretty sure it's a ghost of your dad. Finally, some adventure, some closure. You'll, you agree that you'll come with him tonight to see the ghost when it shows up again. Such an obvious decision that feels like you didn't have to make a choice in the matter. Wherefore, agree to go with Horatio to see. All right, so I gotta do that. I'll be there, eleven thirty sharp. You say, after, and Horatio leaves satisfied. And now you have eight hours to blow before it's time to meet ghosts. What to do? Be Ophelia, be Ophelia for a while, or play solitaire. Um, I'm going to play solitaire. You, Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, are sitting in your bedroom and playing solitaire for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Which is pretty colossally useless waste of your time, especially since you keep cheating. A five goes on top of a three, Hamlet? Really? Anyway, at this point, we're 15 games in, and wow, if you're not careful, people might start saying that your tragic flaw is, I don't know, in action? In action, man! You cheat at solitaire. Eventually, the sun goes down, and it's almost 11.30, which hopefully you remember as the appointed hour Horatio told you about where a ghost keeps showing up to bother him. Meet the ghosts, huh? Meet up with Horatio and both, and bust some myths about actual ghosts being real. You and Horatio go to where he saw the ghosts the first time, and now we play the waiting game. Says Horatio. He interrupt. He's interrupted by the sound of trumpets. You look at him and raise an eyebrow. They make that noise to warn everyone that King Claudius is getting wasted. Those trumpets go off every night around this time. He sighs. Denmark. He says. At that moment, uh, something insanely crazy happens. What the frig? I'll tell you what the frig. A ghost is here. Look, ghost. Don't freak out, but right now you're staring cold in the face of a specter. You can't even imagine how crazy this whole situation is. If you're getting too scared, read this next clause over and over until you're not insane with fear anymore. Everything will be okay. All right, okay, we can do this. With your last shred of sanity, you quickly glance at the ghost, and you worry that if you stare at the ghost too hard, your brain will realize it's looking at something so insanely possible that you'll just black out. Anyway, this ghost, you can see, though, it, but only little, it's weird. And I can tell you what the frig else, this ghost does look like your dad, and he's getting closer. Wherefore? <laughs> Sorry. Um... Stare at the ghost intently and black out as your mind shuts down. Don't stare at the ghost too intently and try to figure out what it wants. Run away. I'm going to say run away. You make a break for it, screaming like a little baby, and Horatio does the same. Holy cow, holy cow, holy cow, you say, jumping over a boulder and hiding behind it. Man, that was intense, says Horatio, a hand on his chest. You both sit for a moment, each trying to catch your breath. Hey, let's go back and see if he's still there, Horatio says. Wherefore, go back and check the go out the ghost again. Don't freaking don't freak out. Right now you're staring cold the hole in the face. Alright. Sorry, it's the exact same stuff. I don't want to say it again. Alright. Okay. Um I'm gonna stare at the ghost intently and black out as your mind shuts down. You stare at the ghost intently and your brain shuts down and you collapse unconscious. I'm surprised. You are now the ghost. Before you is the unconscious body of your son, Hamlet. It may look like he tripped too many balls. Yes, that's definitely what happened. There are a lot of balls laying around, and Hamlet tripped on one of of uh, uh, on one too many of them. Maybe several. 
Bottom line, too many balls were definitely tripped right here. You expect more from your son than this. Be precise. You expect to be able to tell him that you're murdered by your brother and that he should, oh, I don't know, revenge your death. Instead, you're staring at a dude you can't even touch. You stick your finger into inside Hamlet's brain, thinking that you may touch his brain, he'll wake up. But brains don't work that way, at least with not with immaterial fingers made out of ectoplasm or whatever. And you don't really make your finger solid, which is good, uh, because that definitely would have killed him. What do you do? Wait for him to wake up or see if there's anyone that you can tell about your murder. I'm going to do the, this one. I'm going to see what he, uh, you look around and his he looks freaked out. Hey, listen. Horatio, right? Listen, don't freak out. He seems to freak out a little less. That's good. Hey, when Hamlet wakes up, can you tell him my, brother mur my own brother murdered me, you ask? Tell him I'm looking for a little revenge. Horatio nods weakly. If he doesn't do it, then I'll make sure to revenge you, Mr. Majest your Majesty's ghost, sir. Just sir is fine, you say, smiling at what you hope is the reassuring way. You look at Horatio uh, for a moment. Well, great, you say, perfect. Horatio looks at you. You look at him. He scuffs his feet a little. So uh, I guess that's it, you say. With my unfinished work now uh, finished, I suppose it's time for me to die for real now. You fade away in a shimmering light. Certain that with Hamlet's intensity and Horatio's probable competence at actually achieving goals, you'll be revenged in no time. What could possibly go wrong, right? Exactly. This is most assuredly 100% solved for real. It's too bad you couldn't stick around and watch the revenging go down, but you don't make the rules. Hey, I guess you're about to find out who, if anyone does. The end. Don't freak out. <laughs> Ah, congratulations! You found a piece of artwork. Do it at any time. So let's see how I did. Oh no! Wait. Ah. Uh... Game over. Your stats this adventure. Choices made to 16. Times you were. Times you were not. I created a better story than Shakespeare. Um, let's restart from a checkpoint and see where we're at. Um, let's do, I guess, restart from the beginning or when he meets his ghost dad. I forget which. Let's restart from the beginning just so that you can see, but I might skip over the parts that we've already read through because that's a lot of reading. And like I said, my throat's still pretty sore. So restart the story! Well, I didn't know it was going to restart. Oh, uh, no. Thanks. Da 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 da. Wait, we can skip, can't we? Skip. Alright, choose the character. Skip. Alright, we're gonna play as Hamlet again. And we're gonna skip a little bit ahead. Wherefore, ask Claudius for permission to go back to school. And then he calls him your son. We already saw that. Okay. So again, we are now going to do the actual main part of the story, like the how we're going to do it all the way through. Hopefully it doesn't take hours and hours like the actual play. And I will, like I said, I will do my best to be able to speak clearly and without, uh, without being too uh, sniffly or sore throaty. Uh, so he insults him under his breath. We already did this one, so I will click through. He straight up ignores your zinger. Well, shoot. King Claudius goes on to tell you in so many words to so buck up, stop dressing in black, stick around for a while, and have a little fun. He says all the feelings you're having are boring and wimpy. Your mom echoes his sentiments. Dude, your mom just called you a wimp. You agree to stick around in Denmark for a while, they leave, and suddenly you're alone. Woohoo, you're finally alone, Hamlet. Hamlet. 
what are you gonna do? Talk to yourself about how life is in ruins and how everything just sucks or stand around quietly until something happens. I'm gonna talk to myself. Okay, you talk out loud to the empty room and what do you say? I'll tell you what you say. You say you wish your skin could literally melt off your body, uh, revealing a skeleton that gives you a double thumbs down before crumbling into dust. And hold on one second, I gotta be back. Okay, you talk out loud to the empty room, and what do you say? I'll tell you what you say. You say that you wish your skin could literally melt off your body, revealing a skeleton that gives a double thumbs down before crumbling into dust. You say that you thought your mom really loved her dad, but now she's very Claudius, less than a month after her dad's death. Either love itself is fake, or she was faking love, and either way, it doesn't matter because you've lost faith in your own mother. You say to the empty room, in all seriousness, that you want to kill yourself. Whoa, bro, this book just got real. Kill yourself, don't kill yourself. All right, we're gonna stick with the with the thi with the play, but I kind of want to go back and see what he would do if he decided to kill himself. So don't kill yourself. While you're busy doing that, your friend Horatio bumps into you and tells you he's in town for your dad's wedding. We already saw this bit. Blah blah. blah. What now? Agree to go with Horatio. <sighs> All right, now we be Ophelia for a while. Right, you're Ophelia. You're a beautiful and independent young woman, and although it makes you roll your eyes when you think you're when you think about it, you fall in love with the prince. Prince Hamlet is funny and charming, and he seems to like you a lot. You try not to get too excited about it because you're worried you might jinx it, but things are really going great. Only, only it's been hard doing the long distance thing while you've been off in university. And while you love studying capital S science and you're sure Hamlet loves studying capital U undeclared, it hasn't been easy. Now that you're both back together in Denmark for his father's funeral and his mother's second wedding, it's been harder still. Uh, Hamlet's really sad and you can't blame him for that since, you know, his dad died. But you wish there was something you could do to help him. When you last saw him, Hamlet mentioned how the castle seems cold and drafty, and for some reason it stuck with you. You were sitting here at your desk, trying to think of something you could give him that would cheer him up, a way of cheering him, uh, a way of cheering him up a little, remind him he's still got people who care about him. Now, if you recall, you guys, in my last video, we saw a little bit of this. He wears these cloaks all the time, but then he's taking them off in warm rooms and putting them back on in the cold ones. If only there was a way you could keep the rooms at a uniform temperature, he would just need to be constantly adjusting his clothes throughout the day. Or he wouldn't need to be. Uh, but to do that, you'd need some way of measuring heat and a way of transporting it through the castle through perhaps a series of pipes. Your, your thoughts are interrupted by a knock at your door. Who is it you call? It's me, your brother. It says your brother. Come in, let me in. Come on, let me in. I apologize, you guys. I'm not reading very well today. Um, let him in. You open the door for your brother. You can come in, you say. But I don't want to hear any opinions about my personal... If you sleep with Hamlet, you're a slut, he says. Slamming the door in his face, invite him to enter your room. Ugh, oh, I gotta make him invite him to enter my room. Okay, you let him into your room. He sits down on his bed and pats up the empty space beside him. You... Choose to remain standing. Listen, he says, I know you like Hamlet, but he's a prince, so he's going to have to marry someone of his own rank. Uh, who said anything about marriage? You reply, I'm happy with Hamlet, and he's happy with me. We're having fun. No one's talking about marriage. That's another thing, he says. Look, if you have sex before marriage, then you'll be ruined for other men, and no one will ever want you. Uh, he's only dating you because he wants sex. Don't sex him because I'm your brother, and I'm telling you not to. What do you do? Throw him out of your room and slam the door in your face? You think... But he sits down beside for some reason. Tell him that he makes a lot of sense somehow and you'll do as he says. Really? Really? Okay. You sit down on the bed and tell him you'll do as he says and that you sincerely appreciate his meddling in your personal life. Then you go on to say that you're going to abstain from sex before marriage and that he should be careful too because he sleeps around way more than you do. And if you're going to be one heck of a sexual double standard if you're damaged goods and he's totally fine. That's right. I didn't even give you a choice about saying that or not, because you keep choosing the stupid options. Guess you're just going to have to deal with that, huh? In any case, there's a knock on your door, and before you can answer, your father Polonius opens the door. Normally, when you knock, you wait for someone to let you in, Dad, you say. 
You're an idiot if you think Hamlet loves you, he says, and he knows Laertes is in your room too. Oh, hey, Laertes, have fun on your trip. To thine own self be true. Larity not. I already told her she's slutty, he says. Kick them both out and slam the door in their faces. I guess smile and nod and pat the empty spot on the bed besides you and Larity's inviting Polonius to sit down because that's something a person would do. Again, let me point out that the only reason I'm clicking the one with the skull is because we said, we all said and we all agreed that we we're going to do the whole Hamlet one. Even though clearly it is, it is more and more clear that the actual Shakespeare one is not the best. Polonius sits down on the bed beside you. So you guys were talking about Hamlet, huh? He asks. Your, fa your uh, brother nods and Polonius turns to face you. Hamlet only likes you because you're smoking hot, he says. You're an idiot if you believe him when he says you're a great person, wonderful, and a special person. He'll say anything to get in your pants. He said that you're a wonderful person, right? You agree that he has and written, he has said and written some very beautiful things about you and that this means a lot to you. That proves it. Listen, you're too dumb to understand what I'm saying, so I'm going to order you to do the following. Stop seeing him, never speak to him again, and put all thoughts of him out of your head. Slap him across his face and tell him you're not dumb and that you can recognize sincere emotion in a sexual partner when you see it. Or tell him you obey and then call him your lord and follow him meekly out of the room. Agree with everything he and Laertes have said because all that stuff I wrote earlier about you being an independent woman in charge of your own destiny sounds pretty dumb actually and you'll do, you'd will do better do whatever someone else tells you to do because anyone other than you probably knows better about your own life than you do, right? Look, I'm, I am tr now trying to think of the dumbest thing you can do. Please, I beg you, do not choose this option. And again, I apologize, Ryan North narrator. I have to choose this option. Okay, you do all that stuff. Listen, I'm gonna cut our losses here. You're not allowed to be Ophelia for a while. <laughs> what do you do? I guess we have to be Hamlet. Uh, all right, let's go. All right, so we meet up with Horatio. We've done this before. Da -da -da -da. Okay, the ghost is here. Look at ghosts. And we've seen this before, so I'll fast forward through that. Uh, don't stare at the ghost too intently and try to figure out what he wants. Are you my dad? I mean, my ghost dad? You ask the ghost, but it says nothing. Instead, the ghost beckons to you. Uh, he clearly wants you to follow him and leave Horatio behind. I don't know, is this safe? Can ghosts kill people? Uh... Can ghosts kill people, you ask Horatio? I don't know, man, but I really don't think you should be alone with that thing, he says, clearly leaving no ball untripped in his own freakout. Hamlet, man, something is wrong with Satan in Denmark, I gotta say, he yells, his fing quivering finger pointing at the ghost, well done. I'm gonna do it, you say, and you... Follow the ghost in the darkness, or say, by that I mean I'm gonna take this last chance to run for it. Follow the ghost in the darkness... You follow the ghost into the mist, and after walking for what seems like forever, you get tired of walking. I'm pretty tired of walking, you say. You sit down. I'm pretty sure I'm done walking. Yeah, yeah, I'm out. The ghost stops and speaks to you for the first time, his voice is issuing forth from lungs that no longer breathe air. Hamlet is I, your father. Look, I can't stay around here forever, so I need you to listen to what I tell you. I didn't die of old age. I did some digging around, and it turns out I was murdered by Claudius. You gasp, shocked, enraged, killed by his own brother. He did it while I slept. I was in the garden, and you know how gardens are really boring, right? You nod. They're boring even for people who like them. Exactly, says Ghost Dad. Well, it was so boring I fell asleep, and while I was asleep, he poured some poison in my ear. I didn't know poison worked that way, you say. That's what I said, shouted Sir Dad, throwing his hands above his head in frustration. He starts to pace back and forth. Uh, anyway, I want you to take revenge on him for me. I don't know, cuss him out or something, pull out his chair uh, when he's about to sit down, um, offer him a high five, but then when he goes to high five, pull your hand away and say, too slow, or should he offer you a high five, you must leave him hanging. I could murder you, or I can murder him, you offer. After all, he is sleeping with mom. Uh, your dad paces and stares back at you. He what? What do you do? You tell them they got married two weeks after funeral. Ha ha ha, just kidding. Uh, two weeks after funeral. 
You said he got married basically right after the funeral, and that, that makes Claudius king now. You explain how how maybe it's not technically incest, but sure, the, the timing alone sure feels squicky. Didn't he even read the table of kindred and affinity? All right, whoever so whosoever are related are forbidden of scripture and are allowed to bury together, says your, or asked your dad. Ah, you say, you refer to the document in Queen Elizabeth or to produce, which says the marriage such as this one we're discussing is not just squicky, but a real-life hardcore sin against God, a book which later made its way into the co book of common prayer. Itself so influential that we take phrases such as death to its heart and peace in our time from it. The very same, not your father. Although I can imagine in the future sentiments might change as to whether or not such a marriage between genetically unrelated loving and consenting adults is among the very worst thing it is possible for a human being to do that is not necessarily for us to discuss right now. You agree. Anyway, says your dad, kill Claudius for me. Promise ghost you'll commit murder. Uh... Promise the ghost you'll commit murder in the classiest verse you can come up with. Well, obviously, we're going to go with this one. You clear your throat, hold one hand in the hair in front of you, and you promise the ghost that you will kill an alive human. This is what you say. Yay, from the table of my memory, I'll wipe away all trivial fond records, all saws of books, all for forms, all pressures past, that youth and observation copied there, and thy commandment all shall live, alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter. Yes, by heaven. Your ghost dad seems pretty cool with that. New quest, kill Claudius. Worth 3,500 experience. You have begun quest, kill Claudius. It's worth 3,500 3, experience points. Uh, and once again, I will be back in a second. I need another Kleenex because my nose is stuffy. I will be back in a moment. are here too. Lady's kind of a jerk and Polonius is his father. Polonius is also the daughter of, or the father of Ophelia whom you're totally for, sweet on but she's not here. Who knows what adventure she's having as we speak while you're stuck in the strapped castle room listening to other people talk about their feelings. Speaking of speaking as now Laertes says something about how now Claudius is king and he's intent the coronation is it okay for him to go to, back to France. Claudius says, sure. Wait a minute, you love, you'd love to leave too and go back to school, away from this weird incessant thing your mother has gotten herself into. So gross and weird. What now? Um, I'm going to hold my... T you know what, no, I'm going to ask permission to go to school. You hold up your hand and open your mouth before you can say anything. Claudius addresses you, directly calling you his son. On the one hand, that's entirely inappropriate since you just married your mom just like two weeks ago. On the other hand, he has brought creepy uncle to new heights. Creepy uncle points. Points for that, maybe? What now? Insult him under your breath. Uh, by saying you're more than kin. I, you're related more than once now, as both father, son, and uncle, nephew, but less than kind i.e. this relationship you're in is unnatural, unnatural in real life. People think up zingers like this on the spot all the time. Hey everyone, it's Katie Schenkel back for another Let's Play. We're doing once again uh, the awesome click your own adventure game to your not to be which uh, was done by Ryan North. I had uh, done a couple run throughs of this game a few months ago uh, and I thought it was really fun so I thought I would try it again. Um, I will apologize immediately for my voice uh, because 
I came down with something. I don't, I'm not entirely sure what it is, but it's some kind of cold slash my allergies and my throat's a little sore. So uh, I have a drink with me and hopefully that will help my speaking. But if I sound a little hoarse, it's because of uh, my sore throat. So uh, the last time I played this game, I did extremely well. I actually uh, played as Ophelia and I played as uh, King Hamlet, who if you recall was Hamlet's father, uh, both of whom in the original play did not do very well as far as staying alive, uh, sp particularly King Hamlet, who died actually before the play even started. So I'm really proud of myself that I was able to uh, get them through and give them happy, uh, happily ever afters. So, uh, in fact, Ophelia became a noted scientist, so I'm really pleased about how that went down. So, uh, this time, I, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to try to win or if I'm just going to try to see what some of the other choices are. But, uh, let's see where we go next. So, choose your own character. Or choose your character. You've been born. Congratulations. Good work on the things. Now, surprise, babies are boring. Uh, but I promise most of what we're skipping over was really dull. He ate a lot, and slept a lot, and had lots of friends. Da -da 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 -da. So let's begin, my friend. I don't know who you are again. Are you... Ophelia... Hamlet... So emo teen is 30s. Also, he's Prince of Denmark. He has plus one resistance magic. Hamlet Sr. He's king of Denmark, 50 years old. He's super good at fighting and leading people into battles and naps. Let's say plus one to each. Look, bottom line, he's an unstoppable machine of death and you should choose to be him. And should you choose to be him, you may experience king like this. That totally makes sense. Um, I'm going to do the say you're not my real dad and storm out of the room. While you're busy doing that, your friend Horatio bumps into you and tells you... <laughs> A. He's in town for your dad's funeral, mom's wedding, and they serve leftover appetizers from one at the other. B. Ghosts are real. And C. He's seen one, and so have a bunch of other guys. D. He keeps showing up at the same time. And E. He's pretty sure it's a ghost of your dad. Finally, some adventures, some closure. You'll, you agree that you'll come with him tonight to see the ghost when it shows up again. Such an obvious decision that feels like you didn't have to make a choice in the matter. Wherefore, agree to go with Horatio. All right, so I gotta do that. I'll be there, 11.30 sharp, you say, and Horatio leaves satisfied. And now you have eight hours to blow before time to meet ghosts. What to do? Be Ophelia, be Ophelia for a while or play solitaire? Um, I'm going to play solitaire. You, Hamlet, Prince of Denmark, are sitting in your bedroom and playing solitaire for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Which is pretty colossally useless waste of your time, especially since you keep cheating. A five goes on top of a three, Hamlet? Really? Anyway, at this point, we're 15 games in, and wow, if you're not careful, people might start saying that your tragic flaw is, I don't know, in action? Glory. Um, I have still not played as Hamlet, and uh, I think I'm going to play as Hamlet first. Just uh, what comes to me as far as what I would choose or what I think would be a good choice. And then I will play, because if you no remember, the skull means like going through the way that the story actually progressed in the play. So I think what I'm going to do first is play as Hamlet the way I would, the smart way. And then uh, I will then play uh, just going through the story. <coughs> to be he. Choose to play as Hamlet. Da, da, da. You are Hamlet. You are 30 years old and you're back living at home. But it's okay because your home is a castle. That's right, ladies. You're a prince. Things have been rough lately. You've been trying to focus on your studies at Wittenberg University where you and your bros Horatio, Rosencrantz, and Guildenstern all hang out. But you were called home because your father died. Then your dead dad's brother, Claudius, married your mom, Gertrude, two weeks later. Yup. It's made you kind of upset. You raised home to comfort her, but she's married to your uncle, and that is weird. You feel weird. Right now, you're in the audience chamber of your father's castle here in sunny Denmark. King Claudius is here addressing his court. I tease him.